Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rust Belt Collector here, and it's it's been a while since I've uploaded. For a while I was getting pretty consistent with my upload schedule, things got busy, and I fell behind. So hopefully you guys will forgive me for that. It's, uh, it's getting there, and I'm working on trying to get out some other videos. I've got a decent backlog that needs to actually uh, get out into the world, but we'll get there. That said, I hope you won't mind the setup today with a little bit of uh, wall on each side. I normally like to have a clean white background, but unfortunately with these boxes, I kind of wanted to show the full thing in frame. I know typically I have to like show it in segments and move it around. I don't want to do that. I want to show the full box because these boxes are really, really cool. Now with all that said, of course, this is what we're going to be taking a look at today. I got my hands on the two newest troopers in the six inch black series line in the new boxes and everything. I'm going to be doing two videos. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the clone trooper Camino, And uh, next video, we'll be looking at the Mandalorian Imperial Stormtrooper. So let's get him out of here because we're not going to look at him just yet. And we'll take a look at this guy right here. Now, as I mentioned, this is the new box art style for the 6-inch Black Series. This will be going into the future, whatever new figures come out. More than likely, it will be in this box art style, unless maybe if it's in like the Gaming Greats line from GameStop. That seems to stick with the original Black Series boxes. However, I think with standard line releases, mainline releases, this is what we're going to be seeing a lot more of. And I'll be honest, I'm okay with that. This is a really nice upgrade. I don't think that... Uh, a lot of collectors will be upset to see this style uh, hitting the shelves near you. For a reference, this is what we were used to seeing on store shelves. Just a plain black box uh, sketch art here done by a very talented artist. I can't remember his uh, at right now, his Instagram tag. But if I can find it, I will put it down in the description because he does a lot of fantastic Star Wars related art. And I believe he still does the gaming greats artwork. Where we are used to seeing a red bar with a number and the character's name, we now see a beautiful piece of artwork on the side, which is really quite nice. All of these are color-coded, so this golden-orange color is the Clone Wars line. Rebels comes in purple, the Mandalorian comes in orange. So each figure related to a specific movie or series will have a color-coded box in a way, so that if you were to display them all next to each other, they would blend in really, really nicely. The back of the boxes remains largely the same. A little bar here is different, you've got a little color here, that's where the number is instead of the number being up here. But overall it's the same, picture the character, picture the character, bio, bio. You know, it's got the information you need, of course like choking hazard, don't put these little tiny blasters in your mouth or you might die. Just the normal stuff that you would typically see on a box. Not much to say about this side, although they have removed this type of uh, text from the side of the box. Instead it just has a little Star Wars The Black Series logo down there, colored stripe, and that's it. Dimensionally, the boxes are actually pretty much the same in width, however there is that little slanted portion there, which also means the plastic bubble is slightly smaller, which I guess is good for the planet or something. But anyways, enough of that, let's break this open and take a look at the figure. Now taking a look first at the weapons this figure comes with, he has the standard long DC-15 rifle, as well as the DC-15 short. I don't remember the exact classification of these blasters, but it's pretty standard for a clone trooper figure. I was kind of curious as to if these were new sculpts, because this is an animated Clone Wars clone, and in a strange way it actually is, only in a minor way. It's shrunk down for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why they did this, maybe just to save plastic and therefore money. But as you can see, the blasters are a few millimeters shorter than the old school or the original release blaster. Apart from that, they seem to be largely the same. This one is a little bit glossier and this one is more uh, matte or satin colored. That's purely down to what kind of plastic they used in the molding process. And for comparison, this is the new blaster, this is the old blaster. It's also slightly smaller here as well. Again, not sure why they did this, probably just to save a few little bits of plastic, but uh, kind of an interesting choice nonetheless. If you're like me and you've bought a lot of clone troopers in the past, you'll probably have a good number of these lying around, so it's not a big deal to swap them out if you prefer the slightly larger size blaster. But either way, I think that they will work and they shouldn't be too noticeably different. Taking a look at the figure, now I know that there's been a lot of rumors surrounding this figure, so hopefully we can kind of uh, talk about all the interesting changes that they've made to this sculpt because this is an entirely new sculpt. It doesn't reuse the pieces from the previous like Revenge of the Sith or Attack of the Clones Black Series Clone Troopers. 
And because of that, as well as some other issues, there's been a lot of complaints surrounding this figure. And I'll try and address them, kind of go over what my thoughts and feelings are about this particular figure, and, you know, hopefully give you guys some good advice as to whether you should keep your pre-orders if you have them pre-ordered, or if you should even bother, you know, hunting this figure down in the wild. For those of you that may not know, this is a Camino Security Clone Trooper. It's basically a shock trooper, but in gray. It was seen in Season 6 very briefly on Camino during the Fives arc. Uh, it's a pretty cool clone trooper design. In fact, when this was first announced, I was really surprised because this is actually one of my favorite clone trooper designs, and I never expected them to actually go about making it since it made such an obscure appearance just in a brief little blip, and there was like a commander in this unit, and then there was no named characters, they were just there to hunt down fives. So overall, I'm happy that they made this particular character. I love having this gray shock trooper in my collection, but... The way they executed it could probably have been better, and that's what we need to talk about. Overall, the deco looks good in terms of color and overall style, but that's really more down to the show than it is to this figure. I love the color gray that they used. It's really nice. It's a very flat color gray here on the chest, matte on the shoulders, and glossy down here on the legs, since these are actually molded in gray, and this is painted on along with on the helmet. Now, the paint deco on the bicep, shoulder, and chest looks amazing. They got the gray really nicely done. Shoulder pads look good. Striping looks good. That decal there of the unit marking looks amazing. However, as you get to the helmet, it gets really, really wonky. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. Now, first of all, you might notice that the helmet seems a little crooked. His chin's kind of drooping on this side. Um, it just kind of looks off a little bit. And the main reason for that is that this is actually a hollow piece of plastic glued on top of an unpainted clone trooper head. Now, like a face sculpt. Now, why they didn't just make this a removable helmet, I don't know. There are a lot of videos on how you can remove this helmet, and there's a fully sculpted clone trooper Tamora Morrison head underneath this, and... For the life of me, I don't know why they didn't just give this guy a removable helmet with a painted head. That would have been amazing. However, because they chose to glue it on, it does leave a lot of room for error, and I've seen numerous, numerous pictures of really goofy looking helmets because the soft plastic glued on gets warped and squished and it just looks strange. Later on down the road, I will do a video on how to modify this clone trooper in ways that I think improve the overall quality of life because I don't think that this figure is bad overall. I just think that there's issues that need to be corrected and unfortunately, you have to do that yourself. I wish that Hasbro got it right, right out of the gate. I just don't feel like they did with this particular figure. So yeah, there are some paint defects going on with this figure, like these stripes here don't really touch the brow line, they sort of go up from left to right, and I'm not a big fan of that, so I might have to go in and actually try and replace those either with a decal or painted by hand. And then really the final big kicker that I wasn't a fan of is that they actually got the stripes on the leg wrong. And while maybe more of the casual collector wouldn't pay that close of attention to this, personally, it was kind of a disappointment to see that they missed out on this important piece of deco. Here we have the previous Order 66 Shock Trooper. It came with the Entertainment Earth exclusive 4-pack. This does use the older clone mold, but as you can see, that is what the stripe should look like, and instead we just have two solid bands that go all the way around. It's a small detail, but I really don't see why they would miss that since it's clearly visible in the show in multiple instances, and really this is just a straight deco copy of the Shock Trooper, just in gray. Some of you may find that just to be a little bit too nitpicky, maybe I'm just being too particular about my action figures, and leave it down in the comments. What do you guys think? Like, are these deco problems and warped helmet problems a deal breaker for you, or do you actually find them to be as annoying as a lot of the other collectors in the community do? But anyways, that's enough about the deco. Overall, like I said, I'm really happy they made this clone trooper, and there's a few mistakes and some errors that I'll have to go in and correct just for my own personal sake. With all that said, let's take a look at the articulation. So at the head, you have a dumbbell joint, so that means you've got a ball joint up here in the head, as well as one down in the neck. Gives you a good range of motion. You've got a lot of tilt side to side, pretty good forward and back, as well as, of course, a full swivel all the way around. The shoulders are a standard hinge and swivel, so you can go all the way around and you can go up. The shoulder pads are actually molded in a softer plastic, which allows you to get all the way up like that. It'll just kind of come over the torso. Now here at the elbow is where the sculpt gets a little bit funky. You do have a bicep swivel, but it's this inner underarm piece, if you can kind of see how that spins around there. 
The elbow pad is actually attached here at the bicep by this little band of plastic right there. So you can spin around this lower arm while the elbow pad made out of soft rubber is attached to the bicep and just kind of flexes out of the way. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's definitely different. You could always cut off this elbow pad and leave it like free floating on the elbow if you wanted to just avoid that kind of weird setup that they have going there. But that's the type of thing that I will go over in the upgrade video. The elbow joint is just a standard hinge and swivel. So you have the swivel there and then it just hinges up. Surprisingly, it does get slightly past 90 degrees, which is nice, seeing as the previous iteration really only got to 90, unless we're talking about the Bly or Rex mold, which they never made a standard trooper in. But still, that was a bit of a concern for me after I learned this was a single joint, so I'm glad to see that the articulation is still preserved. Moving down to the hand, you have your standard hinge and a swivel, this one being an inward, and the other hand being an up and down so as to better hold the blasters. Moving down to the torso, you have a ball joint, which gives you a really good range of motion. He's a very flexible trooper, which is always nice. Moving down to the hips, he has a ball joint as well as a thigh swivel, so you can kind of come up, swivel that thigh armor around, and then swivel the knee down, and you'll have a good bend like that. However, once again, you have this knee pad actually attached to the thigh armor, so if you bend the knee just like this, you're going to have a weird knee pad off to the side. Again, in my modification video, I'll try and talk about how to fix this should you so desire and have that knee pad stay on top of the knee when you bring it down like this. For reference, the hip and thigh joint is very similar to the old clone mold. However, at the time, we didn't have a swivel at the knee, so the leg would always kind of go in at a weird angle. This is nice to have that joint there so as to move this leg freely once the hip is in position. However, I wish they could have done something where the knee pad stayed with the knee like it does here. But again, I'll try and go over that in my modification video so that you can modify that to get it looking however you would personally like it to look. Moving down to the foot, you have a swivel that is kind of ratcheted into three positions. So you can have neutral, back, and then all the way forward. It doesn't really let you get in between that. You can kind of see how it pops into those three positions. And then of course you do have a rocker in there which lets you get all sorts of angles on the foot. And so there we have it. This is what you can expect if you pick up the Camino Clone Trooper from the latest Black Series Wave. They've gone and used the same mold for the 332nd Ahsoka Trooper, the Walmart exclusive but they've gone back to the original clone trooper mold for the upcoming clone lieutenant. So I believe that they're only using this mold for Clone Wars clone troopers. I haven't seen anything official about that, but that seems to be the route that they're taking. As I've kind of gone over, there are some imperfections with this mold. Depending on how yours is glued up here at the helmet, you might have weird warping going on. I've also seen some that look pretty good, just standard out of the box. So it's really kind of dependent upon which one you pick up at the store. So. Be cautious. If you see these in store, definitely check and make sure that they're not warped. There's ways that you can fix it if they are, but maybe if you don't want to really mess with that kind of stuff, look for the best paint apps, look for the best looking helmet and go from there. Now I didn't really go over this in the articulation portion, but he does hold his weapons really well actually. I was kind of worried again with those single joints, like would he be able to hold a blaster? Would he be able to get into any kind of action poses? And after having this guy in hand, I can definitely confirm he will hold his blasters just fine. And even with the weird knees and everything, you can certainly get him into some good action poses. You can have him even looking down the sights on the blaster. So overall, this is a pretty good new mold for the clone troopers, even if it is just for the animated figures. I'm not a huge fan of the paint deco issues and the knee pads and the elbow pads. I'm also not a fan of how they chose to not make this a removable helmet. But apart from those critiques, I do think that this will hold up alongside other clone troopers. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Do you think that this is a good clone trooper mold? Will you be picking this up to add to your collection or will you be saying, that's a hard pass for me? Because I've seen a lot of different opinions going around the internet and some people love it, some people hate it, some people are more like me and are somewhere in the middle. You know, they like it, they have their critiques of it, they're probably going to modify it, customize it, you know, make it look a little bit better. But overall, again, I would say that this is pretty good and worth picking up if you can find a good one. But anyways guys, that'll do it for this video. It may have been a longer one, I don't know, just because I had to go into all those like deco things and my issues with the overall figure. 
but definitely be sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe if you're new to this channel, I'll be doing more reviews soon. Be sure to keep an eye out for the review on the Stormtrooper from this wave, as well as my How to Fix the Camino Clone Trooper video where I'll try and go and do some modifications you can make to this figure out of the box just to make it look a little bit better. Small modifications, small quality of life changes that will make this figure stand out all the more. As always, there's a link down in the description to check out my social media links. You can find my Instagram, my Facebook, my Teespring, as well as my P.O. Box address down there. But anyways, guys, that's where I'm going to wrap this video up. So thanks for watching, and I'll be sure to catch you all in the next video.